What's up, YouTube? This is Jamil here, and uh, today is the well, it's Sunday, so I guess it's still sneak peek. But I went yesterday, which was Saturday, and I spent a hundred dollars on sneak peek, and um, that was the worst hundred bucks I've ever spent because the only thing, uh, good things I pulled was a sea monster of Thestius, a tiger mortar, and a glass bell. Meanwhile, everybody else around me was pulling all the secrets in the world and just having a heyday. And it, it was it was very irritating, very annoying. Hence why I guess I just got reminded as to why I never buy packs because I can't pull shit for shit. So, there's that. So, but anyway, um, I competed in the tournament yesterday and there was already a zoo player. Um, he was literally the only person I lost to in the tournament, um, during Swiss and during top, which was a top four match. So I got, I got to play, a, be, you know, a literal hands-on experience against the deck, and, uh, I gotta say it's a little bit different as, and as to how I thought it would, um, be, you know, I think... Uh, you could side the entire C family against them, and you could do fine, but, you know, it's it's not that simple. It's not as simple as playing Flying C, obviously. I mean, we all knew that. They could just play Elemental Triangle, or they can just play Slumber. But, the uh, I'm just going to say this right now. The Zodiacs themselves, they are just, they're pure distraction. They're not the real problem of the actual Zodiac deck. It is actually, in fact, the whole Kaiju engine of it. The Kaiju engine and the D-Barriers. You know, the D-Barriers, the potential strike, if they play it, if they have space for it, but no, it's it's everything else that's not Zoo that makes the Zodiac deck in general a huge problem. The Kaijus are the things that severely cripple your board. And if you have nothing to protect uh, your board from a slumber, then you have essentially lost all control. It's easy to take control of a Zodiac uh, board, of, of their setup. It's very easy to take control, but it's hard to maintain that control. Especially when your opponent is playing Kaijus. When you're, if your opponent is playing Kaijus, it's hard to maintain any sort of control, period. The only way to do that is to stop your opponent from special summoning altogether. You know, so they can't play Slumber or um, uh, suck over your stuff for Kaiju's period. And I thought if you would have a Kaiju on your board that they couldn't play Slumber, but um, I checked the rulings, they still can play Slumber even if you have a Kaiju on your board. So that, that really, really does suck. It really does. You know, I wish it would work a little bit more differently to where you can't do that, but unfortunately, that's not how things work. So anyway, what is what am what am I trying to get here? Well, um, after I've had a hands-on experience with a deck, um, I can um, come with a conclusion of ways to outsmart a Zodiac player. Um, and first off, before I even get started, I would like to say that I told you so, guys. I called it. I knew that eventually Zodiac players were going to adapt to board wipes, and what do you know? My opponent was playing My Body as a Shield. My Body as a Shield is a quick play spell, in case you, some of you have not caught on to what is going on in the OCD, because that's where it started. Um, paying 1,500 life points, when your opponent plays Spell Trap or Effect Monster that would destroy monsters on the field, you can just negate it. Negate and destroy it. Period. And it's a quick play too, which means if they're if it's their first turn and you've already went, they don't have to wait a turn to set Starlight Road, which I thought that was the card they were going to be playing. But I guess I was wrong. I was wrong there, but I knew they but I wasn't wrong due to the fact that they were eventually going to adapt to board wipes because they're not just gonna sit there and continuously roll over to board wipes for much longer. And it's already here in the TCG, and and all those um, ways that every other Yugi tuber has been saying, hey, board wipes, board wipes, best option. 
as I've said, like, the past two other Zodiac discussion videos, you cannot always rely on that method because they will adapt to it. You cannot put all your eggs in one basket and you cannot bank off of destruction. That's not how it works. Or, that's not, it's not going to always work. And eventually, they will catch on and they will play accordingly. Play cards accordingly. And they've already done that. So, if you guys still need some answers or some ways to deal with that without blowing shit up, feel free to look at the first Zodiac video uh, that I had. How to beat him, I believe. But this one is very uh, is just more or less on how to outplay them, more or less. And how to, I guess, keep the odds in your favor and keep control, maintain control. Um, I forgot some of these cards at home while I was fumbling with the stuff, but let's get started. First, we're going to start with Magic Drain. Magic Drain is a card to where you are going to need to protect your back row from their Twin Twisters because they do play them. Uh, and or protect your monsters from Kaiju Slumber. Or if you just want to stop a barrage, you can do that. Now, if your opponent, if you went first and... What I did was I played Cosmos, right? Cosmos are going to be one of the best decks right now against uh, to combat against Zodiacs. There's that, and there's DDD. Z uh, Cosmos and DDD are the best decks to actually play against Zodiacs if you're not playing Zodiacs, which is probably not going to be that high of numbers because if it's anything like the OCG, 85, 90% of players are playing Zodiacs, so... Um, I don't know, but anyway, you set up your stuff, and your opponent plays Twin Twisters, they pay cost, you flip this over, what, what are, what are some of the other spells they're going to have in their hand? It's going to be Barrage or Slumber, nobody, uh, none of them which they want to discard, so, your back row is safe, because their Twin Twister will get negated, so they can continue to play Barrage, and proceed with their plays. Um, and that's just, uh, that's a way to kind of, um, uh, keep resources at bay, because it's hard to, uh, dwindle the resources, and because, um, of the, the trap card, the trap card that shuffles five Zodiacs back in, and the Dagosome Emerald. Now, on to the next card, um, uh, this is, some people are gonna be pissed at me at, about this, but... We, we, we players, we need to know this um, card known as Extra Net. Now, Extra Net is essentially another maxi for the Extra Deck. If a monster is special summoned from the Extra Deck, the opponent of the player that conducted the special summon can apply this effect. Draw one card. It is not once per turn. Now, what's good about this card is um, your opponent has two options. If they're playing Zodiacs, of course. This is specifically for Zodiacs. Actually, to be, if I'm really being honest, I mean, that's the only deck this is go actually going to be good in. If your opponent does not have Twin Twister in their hand, oh, hey, baby. If your opponent does not have Twin Twister in their hand, they are forced to go into Drancia. You will get the draw one, but if your opponent, if they are smart, they will summon Drancia first just to blow this up. Or, no, actually. It's not really that smart, simply because if they do that, they detach their only Zodiac Momorat. Therefore, they cannot summon any other Momorat, so they would have to go into Wild Bow first, then summon Drancia. You have two cards. You just got two free cards off of one field spell. Um, and if you have Maxi in your hand, that's just even better. That's four, that's four cards, four free cards you just drew. And not to mention, if your opponent's special Momrat or they special Taki Timborg after they summon their Terra Top, that's even more draws. You just racked up an insane amount of advantage off of very minimal special summons, and your opponent is put in a pretty very uh, awkward position. So a card like this is good because not only can you can it apply pressure to your opponent. But it forces the Drancia out early, so they can blow it up, 
because they have no choice, because if they don't, you just got four draws minimum off of an extra net. Just period. So your opponent is going to have to give you the draw two just to blow this up and then overlay uh, Tigress or Bullhorn so they can proceed with their plays, but they can't end with a Drancy because they summoned it early, which is fantastic, which in turn, not only do you have the two to four cards in your hand extra to be able to deal with the Zodiacs, but you won't have to worry about the Drancy when it's your turn, making it a little easier for you, which is good. This is a good thing. You know, cards like this, I mean, you want to have your opponent um, play on your dime, on your time. You want to make um, play cards to make your opponent make certain plays early or to preemptive certain cards. And if, if they have Twin Twister in their hand, this is just an, an, a bullseye. This is just a bullseye. So, one of your other back rows is safe. So, it accomplishes that, too, in case they do have the Twin Twisters. So, Extranet is a fantastic card that I do recommend siding. Um, I would side three of them because Terraforming is also a card of three. If you're playing a deck with Field Spells, I mean, it probably sucks that you want to get your Cosmo Town or whatnot. But, if you're playing DDD, you're not really playing a Field Spell, so that's good. Um, next card, which is a very, very good sleeper card, being Deck Devi. Um, uh, there is a problem with this, though, because you got th uh, you can use this against DDD, you can use it against uh, Zodiacs, but we all know that if you Deck Devi too early, when there's cards like uh, Gate and Elemental Triangle, or uh, Zodiac Barrage, as the English name uh, describes it, when you deck Devi too early, they can play those cards and still summon it out of the deck, search for the deck, and not be affected by deck Devi. But, um, it's, it's, um, generally understood to wait until they play those cards, but the problem is, my body as a shield is now going to start being used, so use this wisely. I literally just, um, uh, today had the idea of deck Devi in my Cosmo deck, because um, um, we were, I was looking at Chain Disappearance, right? And um, and it's it's still a really good card against Zeus, but the problem is uh, it can be susceptible to uh, Twin Twister. It can be susceptible to destruction before they even summon. And so I was thinking, wait a minute, everything's like low attack. Just play deck heavy. I put that in my Cosmo deck. I um, summoned Tin Can, literally just set one, which was the deck heavy. I used Tin Can, I searched the three darks th that are over 2,000. Dogfighter, Landwalker, Eclipser. Um, if you don't have Call, don't don't reveal uh, Dark Destroyer, like, ever, period. But he gave me the best one. He gave me the uh, Dogfighter. And uh, I banished uh, Tin Can to summon Dogfighter in his draw phase. And summoned the Dogfighter token, which is the exact same stats on the standby. He summoned Wind Witch uh, Glass Bell. And he searched uh, Ice Bell. I deck Devi, sacked the token, and I literally destroyed five cards out of his hand. Or not all five. Um, I destroyed the Glass Bell and four cards out of his hand, and he only had one spell. I think that was in his hand. He immediately scooped it up. He, there was nothing you can do. See, uh, this is also will be good against uh, Edolins too when um, Fusion of Forces come out. So that's also another good thing. And unlike the new um, Arata of the Crush card, Deck Devi still checks the next three cards uh, you your opponent draws. So that's good. Um, Shadow Spread Virus is essentially the same way. Except for Defense. Um, so, if you're playing DDD, you can play both this and Deck Devi, and also Eradicator. I would, errat I would strongly recommend Eradicator Virus in this meta, especially when you got well, things like Gate, Swamp King, uh, Barrage, Twin Twisters, Kaiju Slumbers. If you, if you have, if you can effectively use Eradicator, use it. Um, uh, Book of Moon and Forbidden Chalice, they're cards, again, that you can use. To, you can use Chalice on your turn to turn off Drancia, and you can use Book of Moon 
to um, book down a Mormorat so they can't summon exceeds. I mean, I really can't say anything more about that. I mean, it, you could use Gopulse too, but um, Gopulse is a tad bit slower and you have to go first. So, yeah, there's that. Keep that in mind. Um, next thing, we're talking about the Dark Horses. The Dark Horses of the format are going to be Vanity's Fiend, uh, Jalgen, or any other thing that prevent uh, special summoning. When you play these cards, your the, your average Zodiac player cannot play. Period. They cannot play. They're unaffected by um things like emptiness. They're unaffected by uh, ghost ogres. So they are. All these things are completely on the radar. You could play Falsodyne and Jalgen in Metal Foes if you're playing the Gofu build. Um, if you can uh, summon Ultimaya and uh, set a card, and you can put out, start a Spark Dragon, and then Pendulum Summon Jalgen or Fossil Dyna, you're in a good spot, because Start a Spark Dragon can protect your uh, Jalgen from destruction, or your Fossil Dyna, and your opponent will never be able to play. The best they can do is set D-Barrier, and wait till it's their turn, and then you're, they're just going to suffer a lot of damage uh, doing so. Which, in turn, they're going to end up drawing. They're going to flip over D-Barrier. And they're going to call um, Synchro to negate the spark. But they're still going to have to uh, summon. The only thing they ha have to really kill Fossildyne and um, uh, Jalgen is Thoroughblade. And, and people really only use one. Maybe two. And if they don't have it, then they're screwed. They're stuck. They lose. You win. So, these are the Dark Horses of the format. Anti-Special Summoning cards are the most important cards uh, to be running if you're not playing Zoos. Um, if you're playing DDDs, you can definitely play Vanity's Fiend. If you're playing Metal Foes, you can play um, the other two I just mentioned. But, if you're not playing those decks, uh, you're going to have to rely on Emptiness, which, again, it's a trap card. It's susceptible to destruction. It's very easy to get another card off your board. Um, if Emptiness was at 3, um, I wouldn't mind, but uh, it's a problem. Um, oh, I forgot. Last card. Last card that can f um, not deal with the Zodiacs directly, but deal with their consistency. Um, if your deck can grind, is really known for grinding, play Ghost Reaper. Um, in the side deck, and what target, uh, what is your Reaper target, if you may ask, um, it's not what you think, it is not the Drancia, it is not the Bullhorn, but it is the Emerald, if you can Reaper the Emerald, um, their consistency goes down the drain, they can't recover the resources, they can't recover, um, their, their, uh, Tigress, they can't recover their Mulmorats, and they're just stuck there. They're just stuck on the one cycle. Um, two cycles, actually, to be honest, because of the trap card. If you can DD Crow the trap card and stop it from going off, and you can Reaper the Emerald, the Digosto Emerald, um, one, this is a cheaper option because you don't have to spend $45 on a Bullhorn or on a Drancia just to... Um, as a Reaper target, you can use the Emerald and um, stop their consistency. So after, if you can manage to shut down their trap card or banish it out of the graveyard, and you can uh, banish the Emeralds so they don't uh, recover, then you're in an amazing spot. You're in a super good spot, and the only thing they'll have from that point is Kaijus to fight against you, which... It ain't really too much of a problem without Zodiacs and all their speed and um, uh, stupid, like, stupid, uh, crazy plays to back them up. Again, Zodiac monsters and the Exceeds themselves are just distraction. It's Kaijus. It's Kaijus and it's their back row. Deck Devi and uh, all these other cards are just meant to slow down the zoo so you can fight against Kaijus. And um, maybe some problematic exceeds without interference from zoos. Because zoos are really good for interfering with your stuff. 
But again, I don't know why, but everybody is so distracted on them when it's the kaijus that are doing the real damage. The kaijus are they're the ones that not only do real damage, but they cripple everything you have. They're the ones crippling your boards. So, if you have something that, like a Fog... If you can manage to play Fog King... Well, nope. Fog King doesn't work because Slumber and Master Restrict doesn't work because Slumber and Twin Twister. So, literally, the only way to stop the entire Kaiju um, counterpart of the Zodiac deck is anti-special summoning cards, which are these. So, if you're playing Metal Foes, you're playing DDDs, you're good. If you're playing Cosmos, you can use uh, Deck W to your advantage. Um, you can you can side uh, Magic Drain if you're playing Ariane in any deck. Uh, Magic Drain can uh, help diminish the resources or consistency or just stop, protect your back row or your monsters from being destroyed. If you if your opponent doesn't have anything else, so again, let me know what you guys think about. These uh, selection of cards and how to outsmart your opponent, how to force your opponent to play how you want them to play. You want them to play their Drancia early and not end with it. Which is why Xfernet is, I th believe, the second or um, third best choice among these cards. The others being Deck Devi and. Um, um, the Dark Horses, the anti-special summoning cards of the meta. Or, of, like, if you can prohibit your opponent from specialing, or if you just want to just a deck to just say fuck the meta, just play barrier statues. Just play barrier statues, and you'll be good. Just play barrier statues, get your card in demise while they're cheap, they're $15. Uh, you don't need desires. And just play floodgates, and, uh, yeah, have fun with the, this is going to be a rough format, guys, um, it was rough for me, I mean, not yesterday, I mean, I did really good, I went undefeated until I played against Zoo in Swiss, lost, played him in top four, again, lost, but I didn't have these, these cards, and I didn't, and I got a little bit more insight, because I got the hands-on experience of playing against a Zodiac player, so let me know what you guys think. In the comment section below, give me your feedback, give me some of your ways you can outsmart and outplay a uh, Zodiac player, and I will see you guys next time.